triple C. I'ma make them bend the knee. Rolling with the triple C. Don't really got the heat. Yeah. Liftthechooks.com has the juice. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Five Feedback. I'm your host, Henry Sudo, aka Triple C. And on today's episode of Five Feedback, I am going to be dissecting that tried Stipe Miacic. Guys, he and John Jones, this fight is sizzling. They're supposed to fight in July. They're supposed to, we don't know when they're fighting, but I want to break down Stipe Miacic. Does he really have a chance against the greatest of all time? Let's look at his strengths, opportunities, and threats. Anyhow, this wouldn't be possible without our sponsors, Lifted Truck. You guys want your custom truck? Since 1995, they've been lifting trucks and customizing the trucks best for you. So you guys make sure to go to liftedtrucks.com. Anyhow, guys, enough talk. Let's take it to the big screen. So here we have it, Stephen Miochik, 34 at this time versus Alistair Overton. I mean, this is a, this is quite this is quite some time here. Very similar in everything, pretty much. Just a three-inch reach advantage. Look at how look at look at how close they are. Anyhow, enough talk. Let's hit the play button. You have Rado. Oof, getting caught in the first first minute, getting caught with that right hand by a guy like Alistair Overeem. Bah, right away. Look, look, I mean, he's breaking distance right away. If you get that close, you gotta go. You cannot hold off or do anything. You gotta go. Bah. Catching him, and he's a southpaw. Catch his teeth right away. But as time went on, you know, about a minute left, this is when Stipe likes to eventually turn it into he, a lot of Stipe's striking, he likes to really, he's an inside fighter. Yeah, he probably doesn't, he's an inside fighter either way. Like, he'll, he'll stick in that pocket. But for him to go up and beat somebody like Alistair Overeem, uh, you know, in that department, I mean, it's just cool. I mean, I mean and, and this is also we got to watch out with Stipe, is the fact that he has takedowns. You see, he's not afraid to take people down. He's not afraid, he doesn't care who you are. Yup, the power man, you cannot deny this man. You cannot deny the fact that this dude's got power. Yeah, and that's awesome, and he gets the victory. And I was wrong, he is a champ. He was a champ at this point. You know, and then he went up none other than uh, with Junior Dos Santos. Junior Dos Santos, uh, you know, similar in age. You know, the reach advantage goes to Steven Miocic. I mean, Junior Dos Santos at this time, he has gone through the trenches. He had fought fighters like he has been in these fights with Kane Velasquez before Kane Velasquez started getting injured or whatnot. Yup. See what I'm saying? This is where he this is where he tends to have success. Is when he gets close. When he he's, he's a, it's almost like a sparring session. I mean, guys, the impressive part of Stipe is he had when he was champion. I want to say he had three to four first round stoppages. And he gets that close. He took the distance from uh, from our, uh, from uh, Giro dos Santos. Look at how he grabs him from the waist right here, and it's just using that one arm to hit him. He's controlling. He wasn't using two. He was making sure he was hovered over them, had that right pressure, and he was able to continue with strikes. Yep. And here we have none, none other than DC. I mean, you know, DC four years, four years, the elder, you know, pretty, uh, yeah, he's John Jones's size, you know, a weight advantage for DC, which is crazy for 5'10 or 5'11. I think he's 5'10. I was just with him. You know, crazy reach advantage for Stipe. Daniel Corman was a short heavyweight. Let's hit the play button. Champ versus champ. Yep. Right away, what I, what I, what I, what I'm telling you, where, where does this man love to have success in the short distance range? And DC is kind of just rope a a little bit. He's just kind of like, bah. Yeah. And this is where Daniel really turns it up. This is this, this is why mixed martial arts isn't just striking. Yep. And and. And it seems like Daniel, because he's a short fighter too, he's forced to be inside with them as well. 
And da now Daniel started kind of putting the pressure on him. And now watch. This is, oh, that is so nice. But I want you guys to see what he did. Look at how he was over, came under. And then as he came under here, that, that hand was coming, but he was super loose with it. So he came here, went back to that underhook. And as he came back with that underhook, he released and he was able to watch. Boom, catch the chin. To, to me and my eyes, this is, this is Daniel Cormier's best victory. Such a slick look he, from the from the old, from the underhook or from getting for, you know, at this time Stipe had the the underhook and I want you guys to watch. He redigs and gets his own underhook, right? Moves them a little bit with that hand to be able to feed with this opposite to eventually catch Stipe. Bah! You see what I'm saying? Like that's chain wrestling. That's chain wrestling. Look, boom. That's chain wrestling with, with punches. God, that's like some hockey stuff. Really nice finish by Daniel Cormier. Look at DC, look at that, he's got that missing tooth. Look at DC. So DC, I'm gonna help your smile and I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this gap, DC. So I can give you a complete smile. There you go. Congratulations, DC. Look at this, look at this, boom. But look, look at this though, you, you, did you guys see Daniel Cormier's buddy? Look, the short king baby, stand up. These are the type of guys you want in your damn corner. Look at that, he pushes down your Cormier. Look, that's a homie for life. Barely kind of moves Brock Lesnar, but he was willing to go toe to toe. He's like, hey man, what's your problem? Look at DC, he got pushed hard in front of his family. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and here we have it. Revenge. Revenge. Uh, Daniel Cormier, the champ at this time, he was 40. He was 39 when he fought him. And now he's going up against Stephen once again. Let's hit the play button. Yeah, look at DC. Look at DC. DC, I love it. I love it. Sound the ticket. Mugging. Nice. DC started off really good in this fight with the takedowns. I want to say he does take him down. But look, 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 uh, look, look at Steep is doing the right thing. That's a lot of energy, guys. That's a lot of energy that Daniel just used against a big dude. And then he kept him up there. Like, you got to drop him. You got to, you got to do something to put him in good position. He has him lifted. Boom. And eventually drops Steep in the old chick. And again... This is where he has success. This is where he has success. And I think about a fight with him. I think of a fight with him and John Jones. John Jones ain't not in a minute this, this close, or he shouldn't. You see what I'm saying? Like DC was forced to get close because he's short too. Or he's short, He's DC's an inside fighter. He doesn't have that crazy reach. Go ahead, hit the play. Yeah. Getting going after his legs, making DC think takedowns too. Yep. You start making people think takedowns. This is this is where the fight starts to get a little a little tougher. This guy, he's not afraid. This is what you do do against shorter guys. You see, luckily I like to inside trip, or I like to do over unders. Yep. First time he started going to the body. I was I was at this fight live, and I started recognizing, I started seeing. Daniel Cormier's demeanor changed, and he's good. This is what I look. This is this is what I liked about Stipe, as he stayed relent relentless on that body. Boom, going back at it again. See, look at look at Daniel. Daniel's hands are dropping. Then it goes up top. Body, boom, and then catches catches it up top. Watch. Boom, and then throws it straight. Bah. So now he's got to protect two things, his head and his body. Again, beautiful body work. I knew Daniel was hurt and then goes up top. I mean, he did a really, got a, he did a really good job of mixing the body. Get, when, you, when you get hit to the body and they hit you at the right place, it's terrible, it's paralyzing. It really is, and then, nice, okay. Crip walking, uh, Irish dance, I'm not sure what that is, but. 
rightfully so you deserve to you know dance yep and here we have it against uh against against the one and only you know at this time this was this was the second time that they fought against francis nungano very very similar and everything obviously steep is a little older i think i want to say he's i mean this is a while ago he's probably 40 or 41. yeah and notice what he's doing this is this is where francis started becoming more technical since the first time they fought going to the body and watch him go up top bah boom 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 jab it to the head jab it to the body then eventually brings it back with that right hand look head body bah catches catches steep is starting to mix it with steep right just going blow for blow with him but steep it was moving man steep it was not letting uh steep it wanted to uh he wanted to fight man like he was trying to take his chances and be able to wrestle him. He had the right game plan. Was he too small for this? Was he too small going against him, Francis Ungano? You know, at this time, Francis got really strong and got better. You know, more of that, Stipe, more fakes with Francis. You know, and again, he kind of he, he kind of rolled the dice because remember remember what I was telling you he likes to close the distance. You can't do that against. Of Francis Nungano. You can't be ended with guys that have crazy um, specimen power like him. That those first shots should kind of almost teach you a lesson. It's like, why did I get caught? What is it that I need to do to, to be better? It's just that Stipe has also been he he's been hit he's been hit quite a bit. He's been dropped by people. He he is a he is a bit chinny. And then when you put a guy like Francis, oof, gets the, got that last blow. I want to say this is the last time Stipe has fought. So he's going in there after, you know, after getting stopped by Francis Nugano to eventually, I'm not sure what they're thinking about the fight with John Jones. We still don't know yet if they're even going to fight. But you start to wonder, how is he? Has he been competing? Has he been going against other guys at the gym? Like, has he been simulating competition fights? You know, because as of right now, because John Jones did go through the whole camp, he is up one on a guy like Stipe. Oh, look at DC. Look at DC. He's like, damn, DC is like, and even DC said, he's like, I ain't firing a guy like Francis Ngana. Hell no. Nah. I'm like, DC retired at the right time. You don't want to go up against a monster like that. And here we have it. Now I'd like to set up to the three T's, what I call the techniques, the tactics, and the threshold. Let's go. So the techniques, the tactics, and the threshold. Where is it that I want to start off with, with Stipe? Huh. I want to start off with Stipe here. I think this is the greatest gift. Is his tactics. The fact that he was able to, that second fight when he fought Daniel, he would invest in that body and continue to keep attacking that body. You know, and to be able to fight people different, to be able to mix it with takedowns. Even if Daniel Cormier was a two-time Olympian. Still taking him down. I mean, guys, I'm gonna have to give him a nine. His threshold, his threshold is another thing that I think is uh, really good for a heavyweight. I think he, to me, he's a guy that has the most conditioning other than Cain Velasquez at the heavyweight division. Super good shape. And he's, he's willing and able to go five rounds if he doesn't stop you in the verse. For that reason, I gotta give him another nine. His technique, his technique. I think this is where, uh, I think this is where, where a guy like Stipe could make adjustments here. He really could make adjustments because, it, and particularly defensively, he fights in the pocket a little too much when he's got a bigger van, a bigger reach than a lot of these guys. They really understand more of fakes and feints, and sometimes when he gets hit, he'll just he'll kind of stay in the pocket. You know what, I go back to the threshold because he has been stopped, I'll give him an eight. Because the threshold too has to do with his, with the ability of taking a hit and being okay. But for the technique, to get back to the technique, I think this is the area where he could really make improvements. So for that reason, I'm gonna have to give him an eight. What do you got for me, Michael? I'm sorry guys, I'm terrible at math. 25. Yeah, 25 out of 30. And again guys, 25 out of 30, is uh you know he's got five points of improvement 
I'm not here to just, you know, no, no, no. You have an opportunity to get better, Stipe. You do. Obviously, you're going to be fighting a guy like John Jones. And John Jones, I mean, obviously, John Jones is John Jones. But this is what I would rate you. I think the biggest thing is right here for him is his technique. Could, could he understand fakes and feints? Does he always have to fight inside the pocket like he does? I mean, those are the answers that he has to, that he has to answer. So again, guys, I want to give a special shout out to our sponsors. That's right. Lifted Trucks, Lifted Trucks. When you guys want your custom truck, that's right. You want it lifted. They've been customizing trucks since 1995. So you guys make sure to go to your local dealer. You guys make sure to go to liftedtrucks.com and get your lift on. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C, and we are out. So thank you guys again for watching. It means a lot to me. So you guys remember there's more breakdowns, there's more technique, there's more tactics, and there's definitely more cringe. So make sure to subscribe and click on that button. I'm out!